What's up guys, JC Sense here in an echo, an echo chamber. This is what it sounded like in old studio before we ever did any sound treatment. And Hi Phil. Hi. It's just challenge day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the last bit of stuff. We've not moved out of here yet. Um, I don't even remember having that other plant. That's kind of weird. I've got this stuff up here I've got to take down. So I figured we'd just kind of take you guys along for the ride for the uh, Last hurrah in our very first set we ever had. And I need to knock these down because these were things that I stuck up there to block off the lights that are up there so that when we had our set, and I'm sorry about the echo, it's really bad, I'm sure. When we had our set there, there was too much light. So I don't want to break anything when I knock this off, but how did I get it up there? <laughs> if it's just. Oh. oh my god, it like left a. It left a cloud of dust in the shape of the... <laughs> One down. So, we brought this back. And uh, how many of you remember this build? This is the Inwin D-Frame, which I did. Uh... Yeah, this is glass tubing. Uh, this is glass. But as you can see, the coolant, look at, look at there. It's all like, like slime in there. And then it this looks like, so this looks like the secret of the ooze, you know, Ninja Turtles. And then you can see the blocks, it's all nasty. So this had one of the, um, the Primo Chill True fluids is what it was called. It wasn't the view. The view was the one that had like the pearlidescent in it. And then the true was the same thing that the view was based on without the pearlidescent. So what I want to do right now is this system has probably not been turned on in three years, two years at least. So I want to turn it on right now and I want to see if it remixes and we'll just kind of do some general like maintenance on this. Um, I'm probably going to tear it down. I don't think this system is going to stay together. These are two Titan X Pascal cards, little piece. So they're like the, the highest end of the Pascal series, and then obviously what RTX come out and all that. So these are old and obsolete, no one cares anymore. Um, but this has some really nice components in here that I really do like. I mean, I liked this motherboard. I don't remember what CPU is in here. I wanna say it's X299. It's probably like a 7920X or a, maybe a 60X. This is a 16 core, but we'll see. So I got my mother, monitor, my mother, no, my, I got my motherboard. Got I got my CPU. <laughs> I got, but let's see if it mixes. Ew! Look at this reservoir. That's actually kind of impressive, though. Ew! Look how aerated it is. But you can look at the reservoir. Look at the bottom of it versus the top. So you can see it hasn't fully remixed. But look at the rest of the tubes. I'm really, truly surprised at how well it's sort of remixing. So it turns out it's a 7900X, which is an even lower ranked CPU than I would have. That's a 10 core, 20 thread, which is funny because you can get that now with a 10900K. We're not getting a good mixture here in the reservoir. Like I'm gonna have to rotate this system around a bit to get it to sort of mix up. Um, but you know what? I, this is not actually looking too bad. Like the way the blocks look in there, this isn't something that I would look at and consider to be Poor. Like, it hit, oh, this isn't really holding out or holding up very well. This is, I think, doing a pretty damn good job, if I know the truth. CPU fan speed 600, that's gotta be the pump. Look at it, look at it now. <laughs> it's cool looking. Well, I'm gonna lay it on its back while it's going. You ready? Now it'll mix up. Sort of. So it's gonna be all like laying in the radiators and the blocks and stuff, but as I, lay, as I leave it like this, it's starting to mix back up in the reservoir. This is one of my favorite builds I've ever done. And it's kind of crazy. It's not that dusty inside. The blocks don't look bad. Like this is a perfectly salvageable gaming rig that's capable of like good stuff, you know? This is one of the things I hated about this case though. Look at this. <laughs> I think this will be a fun little comparison here to see how far has it come in terms of performance. So a couple things. One, the system is so old, it predates any of the RTX like drivers and stuff. Two, it predates any of the updates for the OS to include any RTX. And three, it needs a lot of updates before we can continue to get any of that stuff to install and work, so we'll be back. 
All right, well, fast forward now an entire 24 hours. That's how long it, well, it didn't actually take that long to get this updated. Um, we just decided to go ahead and cut and come back the next day because there were a ton of updates, like three years worth of updates that needed to be done. So I figured for fun, we'll benchmark this system now, which was built in 2018, using parts that were more or less from 2017, uh, just to see how they sort of fare. So here we go. We've got, uh, this is R20. Now, our 5950X will hit about 8,200 so score to, to give us a comparison here. So if I go ahead and run, this is a 10 core 20 thread. Now there's no overclock or anything applied. It's taking forever to start the test here. We'll kind of see where our score lands at. But one thing I want to kind of point out too is when I came in today, this had been sitting idle over, not idle, but off overnight. The fluid didn't fall out, which I'm kind of surprised about considering how many people we know and myself included that have had bad luck with the uh, pearlidescent opaque type of fluids. So this one's not a pearlidescent obviously, but it is opaque. And you saw how separated it was when we started the, uh, the, this video yesterday. And you can see now most of the foam on the top is gone. A little bit has started to foam back up since I started it. There was no foam when I started the system a little bit ago. This is a normal effect of the, the Primo Chill View slash True stuff is aeration or getting air in it will cause it to foam. It will settle, but then it will kind of foam back up. And that's why I always make sure they're topped off. The level did drop a little bit though because of sublimation. But the nice thing about having a reservoir like this is they can, the air makes its way back to the reservoir. So here, we're about to finish and we got a 5,102. <laughs> How much was this CPU when it came out? You know what? I've not looked up these prices in a while. 7,900X launch price. $999. That's right, because the 9980XE and all that was $1,900. I forgot this was, a th this was the $1,000, the cheap one. This was the cheap one, because the, the, the 7980XE was 19, like $1,900, right? I, okay, I, this is a little, you guys are, are kind of getting mind trip J here, because I've not really gone back and sort of compared how far CPU prices have fallen because of Ryzen and what that's done. The sad part is, Two Titan X Pascal's little peas. So these are the these were the last of the Titan X of, of the that series, the 10 series. Thousand dollar CPU. Truly just a single 3080 would destroy this in terms of GPU performance. Any Ryzen CPU at this point for gaming would absolutely destroy this because of core clock and IPC on 5000 series. Let's do this. Let's see if we can even run Port Royal. Port Royal does support SLI, so both of these cards will be allowed to. I mean do SLI things apparently, however they're gonna handle uh, ray tracing. To put this into perspective, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition card with the launch drivers and all that stuff gave us a score, a GPU score of 11,466. One thing I wanna point out is I did just notice a leak right here forming. To be fair, I was moving that tube around and going blah, 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 when I was playing with the radiator, so I probably caused that. Go! It is taking so long. It's on an M.2 also. My laptop literally loves it's even on a Dim.2. <laughs> Opening frame rate on our 3090 is 76 FPS. <laughs> 19, 20. And we scored a 5,142. So more than double that is what a single 3080 is capable of in Port Royal. 11,466 is what we get with an RTX 3080. Does that mean that this is a terrible system? No. Can it do RTX? No, it can't, not very well. I know I've kind of been harping on the system a little bit, but let's be, let's be real, it, it still is an amazing gaming system. You could play any game you want with high frame rate, just don't turn on RTX and stuff. Um, I wanna talk to you about some of the things to look for though on, on old systems like this. Like you can see the fluid here. Let's talk about the top of the reservoir here. You can see the foaming. And if you compare this to how it looked yesterday, it's not as bad, but you can see how it sticks, right? See that? So that gives you an idea of how thick this fluid kind of is. And that's something to keep in mind because it can fix this. It can build up in the blocks and stuff. So let's take a look at the GP or the CPU block right here. Um, you can see it's actually not too bad. If we compare this to some of the videos I've showed you in the past of how bad it can be, um, this really is not bad at all. You're gonna see some gap like where it's kind of has a milky look in between some of the way that the passages are. That's normal for anything with a clear acrylic top because it doesn't seal. You know, the O-ring is only around the outside. You can see that black line, that's the O-ring. So it's gonna get into areas sort of in between and that's normal. So if we take a look at the GP block, you can see what I was talking about, that milky effect. It sort of gets in between like the, the path right there. Cause again, the O-ring is only around the perimeter. There's no O-ring in here. This is normal. 
This looks perfectly fine. I don't see any chunks and stuff really building up on the microfins, which is, this is the cooling element right here. This is where heat along the card is picked up, but this is the hottest part of the card and that's where the temperature is gonna be hottest. Um, this is also where the flowest is most restrictive. So if you had any big particles or anything, they could get caught in there. And it actually looks pretty good. It doesn't look bad at all. Now to give you a little bit of advice on some things that you can do, if it starts to look bad, um, to, to start to kind of, I don't wanna say heal the coolant, but had, had it, if it's been sitting for a long time, like I have showed you here, this one came back pretty good. This is sort of ugly up here. Realistically, all I would have done here is top this off with either distilled water, because adding that much more distilled water to it would not have affected the uh, mixture at all. That way you can't see this, which is pretty bad. Um, but what, you, what I would do is I would turn the fans off entirely. Unplug them, go into software, turn them off. Turn on something like um, Heaven or let Port Royal or, or one of the other Time Spy tests or something run in looped mode, in windowed loop mode, so that it doesn't end the test. Get the loop nice and hot, nice and hot, because that oftentimes will break up a lot of that sediment that, bore, that forms both in the blocks and the radiators. That's the other thing people tend to forget about is there's thin rows, these, these rows that go down the radiator, those are referred to as rows, and that's where the fluid flows through. And that's thin and restrictive as well. And it's rough in there because of the fact that it's just brazed copper, right? And so it's not um, real smooth. And anything that's got a rough texture like that can give you things for the fluid to stick to, and, and then it will start to build up. Getting it hot will start to break up a lot of that sediment. So if you wanted to bring the fluid back, um, you, you can and I've done it before. This actually looks pretty good. I would totally continue to run this. Um, I'd be a little sketched out about the leak that's a little bit forming right here. At least it's on the bottom and there's no components that it could leak on. I think it's just a little bit loose because of the fact that I was wiggling it around. It is glass tubing, so it's really smooth. So it's easy for it to kind of slide in the O-ring a little bit. But I'll be honest with you, this video probably seems kind of like a, a crappy one because I expected this to like turn on, just be like slime and chunks going everywhere and this would turn into a, let's tear it apart and clean it up. But this is not tear apart cleanup worthy. That one is back there that I keep pointing at. Skunk works a million times. So I just don't want to deal with it. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I just want to kind of take you along for a ride in this. This is only about three, almost four years old. Things have really accelerated in the last four years in terms of performance and performance per dollar even. Hardware accelerated? Hardware, <laughs> is it DLSS? No, I'm serious, the, the, the CPU alone. I mean, the GPU, the Titan X Pascals are not terrible. I mean, you could still game on those absolutely fine. Um, it's the CPU that really shows where the, the battle was taking place. And this is why I'm constantly saying, I love the fact that AMD is, look, looks like they're getting their act together with GPUs. I think based on the headroom or the, the, the amount of gap they've made up from uh, RDNA 1 to RDNA 2 and where they are now competing with NVIDIA on, um, you know, like just standard rasterization performance. They're where NVIDIA was last gen on RT. So if the next version of RDNA can put them right on par, we might see a massive push and increase in performance at the same price point, which is obviously more FPS per dollar and performance per dollar, which is what we all want as PC enthusiasts. So anyway, Sign off down below how long you've gone on any of your opaque fluids and whether or not it started to gunk up and fall out on you. Fall out is where you saw it wasn't suspended anymore and it looked clear again. Um, and what fluid it was so that people can kind of get an idea of what does and doesn't work. And also to which components and blocks you're using. The material matters. And I think the glass really helped in this instance because there was no plasticizer, there was no soft tubing, there was no acrylic, there was no, well there's acrylic on the blocks, but there was no um, PETG or, or any of that which I honestly think the glass builds I've done always kind of help the longest. So thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. And I'm gonna go set this one in the backdrop of our other set.